Hello, my treat seekers and Marilyn Monroe obsessors and copycats. Well, I got a treat for you. What was her beauty secrets and her relationship with Ella Fitzgerald? Let's talk. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Of all the friendships between famous women, that of jazz singer Ella Fitzgerald and actor Marilyn Monroe, may be one of the least known. The story of their friendship was apparently so obscure that audiences of the 2008 play based on the story believe it to be fictional. As unlikely as the pairing between one of the best female singers of all times and one of history's most beautiful celebrity scenes, their friendship was in fact real. Not only was it real, but it helped propel Fitzgerald to even greater success and gave Marilyn Monroe a new skill set for her portfolio. What exactly brought the iconic blonde actress and the first female African-American Grammy winner together, despite what many would assume the two women shared much in common? Born Norma Jean Mortensen and baptized as Baker in 1926, Marilyn Monroe grew up without knowing her father. Unfortunately, her mother and maternal grandparents suffered from mental illnesses issues, partially due to her father walking out on Monroe while she was pregnant. Moreau also claimed that her mother, clearly suffering from mental instability, nearly suffocated her with a pillow, eventually leading her to mother interment in a psychotic institution due to her mother's state. Monroe never truly knew her, you know, recalling as an adult, that's what she said. To me, she was just a woman with the red hair. That's what Marilyn Monroe said. Her mother's absence resulted in Monroe's living with a series of foster families, including a strictly religious one that wouldn't allow her to watch movies. Another that made her bathe in water already used by her seven other foster siblings. And another that forced her to scrub the floors. She also endured several instances of sexual assault while in the foster care system. And after dropping out of high school at age 15, she was married to a young man only a year later as a means to escape her this her crazy life. I know how that feels. At least she got out of it though. Moreau blamed herself rather than the others for her unfortunate past, resulting in significant guilt and low self-esteem. These personal struggles may have driven her to succeed, but they ultimately ended in tragedy. Like Moreau, Ella Fitzgerald also grew up without really knowing her biological father. Born in 1917, a very young Fitzgerald moved to New York with her mother after she parted ways with Fitzgerald's father. Both her mother and her mother's boyfriend worked several jobs to make ends meet. And Fitzgerald also did her part by completing odd jobs of dubious legality. Yeah. Gathering and delivering money for gamblers and protecting a brothel by watching for the police. Like Moreau, Fitzgerald lost her mother at a young age as well when she perished following a traffic accident. This tragedy brought out abusive behavior from her mother's boyfriend, and Fitzgerald was taken in by an aunt. The young Fitzgerald was unhappy, however, and began acting out. After skipping school on numerous occasions, her aunt sent her to a reform school, which resulted in even father mistreatment. Father school superintendent Thomas Tony recalled Fitzgerald had been in the basement of one of her other cottages once and all but was tortured. She eventually escaped and lived as a homeless person until she found a band that allowed her to sing with them. In 1934, Fitzgerald entered a singing contest at Holmes Apollo Theater and earned first prize, as well as her first break. She joined Chick Webb's band soon after, and the group produced multiple hits. By the 19 mid-40s, Fitzgerald had become a certified singing sensation. Around the same time, Monroe's career also began gathering steam. After signing her first movie contract in 1946, Monroe earned attention with two roles in 1950, All About Eve and The Asphalt Jungle. When Monroe and Fitzgerald first met in 1954 in Los Angeles, in the Los Angeles show, both had built solid careers in the entertainment industry at this time. 
They respected one another for their roles as women seeking success in a male dominant field. At the time, Moreau had already been listening to Fitzgerald's music for several years and considered herself a fan, according to stories and singing coach and encouraged my role to study Fitzgerald's work to improve her voice. Given her intimate knowledge of Fitzgerald's skills, that's what she said, I love her as a person as well as a singer. I think she's the greatest, Moreau recalled. As the two became more acquainted, Moreau willingly shared details about her past, though Fitzgerald refused to discuss what she endured as a child. The two women soon realized, however, that they shared similar experiences in marriage and pregnancy, such as multiple divorces, fertility issues along with mutual trials they face as a woman in the show business. Fitzgerald's frustration with the racial prejudice and Moreau's resentment of her limiting media image further reinforced their bond. Remarkably, this friendship aided both their careers due to segregation laws and her weight. Fitzgerald was only offered gigs from small clubs. Although she took what was offered, she had to pay the bills, right? Fitzgerald rightfully believed she deserved more. Noting, I know I make a lot of money at the jazz clubs I play, but I I sure wish I could play at one of those fancy places. The Macombo, you know, one of the old Hollywood most popular jazz club was such, you know, such a place. That's what it's called. Hosting stars like Lana Turner, Charlie Chaplin, Clark Gable, and even Rosa Rosa herself. Oh, yes. When Moreau discovered that the Macombo had borrowed Fitzgerald from performing, as the owner believed her appearance would distance audiences, Moreau called him to arrange a deal. She vowed she would personally attend all of Fitzgerald performances and sit in the front row to create more publicity for both the club and the singer. Thanks to Moreau's promise, the owner agreed to give Fitzgerald a chance, allowing her to perform for several weeks in 1955. Stars like Judy Garland and Frank Sinatra attended. In addition, the Mar to Moreau and Fitzgerald quickly became a club favorite. After all, her show sold out. The owner gave her another week of stage time. Fitzgerald recalled, After that, I never had to play a small jazz club again, adding, you know, for Moreau. She was an unusual woman. This is what uh, Fitzgerald said about Moreau. She was an unusual woman, a little ahead of her time, and she didn't know it. That's true. Although Fitzgerald earned the respect of larger clubs and more venues, listen to this, more venues became welcoming to her to the stages. Oh, yes. Yeah. Segregation laws prevented her from entering establishments, you know, sometimes through the front door. African Americans were instead required to enter through the back door, you know, or side entrances. Moreau witnessed Fitzgerald treatment at a Colorado venue and took offense, although she traveled to Colorado specifically to see her friend sing. Moreau refused to attend this venue if she did not see Fitzgerald enter through the front door like the white attendees. Following Moreau's stand, the venue retracted their front door policy and approved their treatment of African Americans. Thankfully, many other establishments followed the same suit. Fitzgerald and Moreau's friendship was hardly one-sided. However, Fitzgerald's singing talent inspired Moreau to become a better vocalist herself. After allegedly listening to hours of Fitzgerald's music, including 100 repetitions of her, Grim, her Gershwin recordings, Moreau managed to improve her own voice. Although she is likely most remembered for her breathly rendition of Happy Birthday sung to JFK at his birthday party. Anyway, that she also performed most of her own singings, however, in movies like The Gentleman Prefer Blondes and Sound Like It Hot. Moreau may not have had Fitzgerald vocal power, but she managed to develop her own distinct sound and style after adopting a few tricks from her friend. Unfortunately, solid friendship forged by the two women didn't last while Fitzgerald avoided alcohol, tobacco, illicit substances during her life. Moreau embraced and depended upon them. All three. Perhaps due to her life, you know, to due to their different coping methods, Fitzgerald began to pull away from their friendship as Moreau became more and more drawn to these substances. Sadly, these differences created a permanent rift in their relationship, and Moreau perished from an overdose in 1962 before the two could reconcile. Since Moreau, since Moreau's former husband Joe DiMaggio arranged her funeral in an effort to control the size, refrained 
from inviting celebrities. Fitzgerald was never able to publicly wish her friends for real. She did, however, note Merle's impact on her life and career, remembering an old Marilyn Adept. Fitzgerald passed in 1996, leaving behind a musical legacy, as well as the amazing story of a friendship between two women who both changed history. Now on to Marilyn Monroe duty secrets that I know most of you want to know, and so do I. <laughs> Thanks to Instagram, YouTube, reality TV, you can get insights into favorite your all of your favorite beauty gurus' makeup techniques on a daily basis and apply to their glamorous tips in an instant. These beauty secrets of style like Carmen Merle and Merle are hard to come by though. But who doesn't want an intimate look at Merle's routine? I do. And I know for damn sure I would never use any of them, but I still want to know because I'm lonely. Okay, nailing the signature Merle style isn't easy. The bombshell blonde was just maliciously when it came to applying makeup and taking care of her skin. Which is probably why the Merle and Merle makeup routine is so legendary even decades after her untimely demise. Wondering, if you're wondering how to look like Merle Monroe, these inventive beauty hacks will give you all the tools you need to transform into a screen siren. Oh yes. Her beauty sleep. Merle Monroe bedtime routine started when she plunged her face into hot to a hot bowl of water as an evening beauty treatment. From there, she would undress completely naked Moreau famously hated PJs and nightgowns, she slept naked, and crawled into her extra wide bed with a luxurious down comforter she knew how to sleep in too. The star shared this. On Sunday, which is my one day of total leisure, I sometimes take two hours to wake up, luxuriating in every last moment of drowsiness. I so agree with this. I even schedule my alarm an hour before I have to initially wake up so I can just lay around in bed for an hour. <laughs> so true. She cut her fake eyelashes in half. The magic of Marilyn Monroe was that she managed to look incredibly glamorous and totally relatable at, at the same time. Part of that impossible to pinpoint alert had to do with her trick for natural looking lashes. To get longer, thicker lashes that still look natural, Marilyn Monroe used to cut her falsies in half and only apply the miniature strips on the outer corners of her eye. Oh yes. I wore fake eyelashes once, and that was on my wedding day. Haven't worn them since. My real eyelashes are naturally long. That's true. She contoured before Kim Kardashian. You ever wonder how contouring began? Well, Merle Monroe was one of the earliest to try it, of course. Her makeup artist used blush to contour her cheeks, as it is customary. But then he took a step further by using blush to contour Merle's nose. Just a dab of pink powder at the tip. It's creating a shortening effect, making her nose look more button, you know, whatever. I have no idea how to apply contour. Never wore it. Anyway, Marilyn Monroe arched her eyebrows to balance her white face. The shape of her eyebrows totally depends on the shape of her face. But Marilyn Monroe knew exactly which shape would work for her round shirt-like features. She favored arched bras with a slight angle and had her makeup artist draw on the paint and eyebrows whenever they work together. She believed that a sharp peak would minimize the whiteness of her forehead. Hmm. I do the same thing, I have to admit, I messed up this time though. She said no to tanning. Merle Monroe wasn't a fan of the tan bed. She once noted and said, despite its great vogue in California, I don't think suntan skin is any more attractive or any healthier for that matter. I'm personally opposed to a deep tan because I like to feel blonde all over. Moreau stayed out of the sun and slaughtered her face in cold cream and melonia. Yeah. She was alone in this debt because she's just longer than permanent. She swore by, however, Arnold Laszlo moisturizer. My hand mispronounced his last name. One of, one of Merle Moreau's favorite moisturizers is still around today. It's called Arnold Laszlo. Laszlo at the validity and Intensive cream. It's still a celeb favorite. The thick cream has a strong floral scent and takes a few minutes to fully sink into the skin. It was a daily part of Monroe's getting ready routine and she took time when luxuriating. Oh yes. I have no idea what this is so no comment on this one. 
She can turn her lips with five different shades of lipstick. Those lips became iconic for a reason. Every day, Marilyn Monroe contoured her pucker to perfection using no less than five different shades of lipstick. Her makeup artist, Ellen Lee Snyder, developed the technique. He used darker shades of red on the outer corners of her lips, keeping lighter shades in the middle to add some dimensions, a lighter shade used in the middle of the bottom lip and on a cupid's bow to create a pouty effect. Oh yes. Now I do do this. I use three or four different shades sometimes to get the perfect shade. So I agree with this one. Her exercise routine was all a bus farming. Merlin Monroe only exercise consists of bus farming routine that she did as soon as she got out of the bed every morning. Holding a set of five pound weights, she do three sets of arm presses at different angles. Yeah. Uh huh. Spread eagle straight above the head and 45 degree angle until she tired herself out. Interesting. I may have that my game in that department. <laughs> they have booster bras for that, but I can understand her need to do that because she was known for her boots and stuff. Anyway, she wore exactly five drops of Chanel perfume. Everyone knows Merle Monroe was a fan of Chanel number no. five. She wore it to bed and she wasn't stingy with the stuff. She used exactly five drops of perfume every day, even poured the fragrance into her bath. Ice baths, that is. Interesting. She was the originator of glossy lids. Yes. Glossy up eyelids are having a major moment right now. Hello, glossier lid star. But Merle Monroe did it first. Her makeup artists loved to swipe or drop a Vaseline or coconut on her lids to give them a glowing wet look effect. My mom used to do this. She used Vaseline as a primary highlighter. In the days before highlighters dominated the beauty aisles of every drugstore, Marilyn Monroe was left to her own devices to get a beauty glow. Her product of choice, Vaseline, she applied petroleum jelly to her skin as a moisturizer before following up with foundation. Once her makeup was done, she applied some more to her cheekbones and bra lines for extra shine. Hmm. I may have to try this. My face automatically get oily, so I don't need to do that. Well, that's it. I hope all of this helps and educates you all because you should know by now it doesn't matter what race you are, background you are. Friendship starts from here, not from your skin tone. You judge from your character, not from the color of your skin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On that note, let me know what you all think below. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that bell to get notifications when I do post more videos. See y'all later. Love you all. Bye.